Scott, did you hear? Vince McMahon is finally opening up the forbidden door for the Royal Rumble. <gasps> Vince McMahon's going to do anal? Ah, uh, damn it, Scott. You know, you always go dirty. You always make this so blue. We're trying to run a nice, clean ship here. This is a family-friendly program. You know I'm not talking about anal sex, Scott Narver. That's absurd. You know Vince wouldn't be even be into that. He doesn't like when people sneeze near him. This is a family show. I'm talking about the fact that WWE might be opening up the Forbidden Door for wrestling so that other people from other companies can come to the Royal Rumble. I'm so sick of you making this gross. WWE's Royal Rumble and the Forbidden Door today on Pro Wrestling Paskies. Welcome to Pro Wrestling Palskis. How's it going, Scott Narver? Oh, it's going good. Oh, Scott, you're at the bash of the beach all of a sudden. Yeah, I didn't know when we were starting. We just had a long silence, so I was just <laughs> Oh, I here. forgot to share the audio with you. You couldn't hear the song. I was dancing and clapping along for the live stream viewers, uh, and you were not even prepared. I apologize. Those of you joining us in the live oh, stream. Oh, we should get a producer for this show. Um, thank you so much to those joining us live. If you would like to be one of those and you're listening to this in the pod feed, head on over to pwpalskis.com. Click that Patreon link. Become a Patreon Palski at the lowest tier. That's all you need. The lowest possible tier gets you access to these live streams, which we are now doing every other week. Um, and you can uh, com- directly interact with the show. Uh, it's very interactive here at PWP. Yeah. You can look, but you can't touch. We're like the bells. No, you can't. You can touch. You can like there's. You can write stuff in the keyboard. You can touch your keyboard. You can hit send. We'll read it. It can't touch you. Um, that's just because I'm wearing my MC Hammer bands. When are you not? Yeah, it's a good point. Um, well, this week uh, is all about the WWE Royal Rumble and the rumors that WWE is in talks with other companies. To uh, seek a high-profile forbidden door entrant. These words don't make any sense. How are they going to get him in? They can't get through the door. If you're not allowed through it, it's forbidden. It's going to be somebody who this breaks rules. Oh, sense. It's going to be. It's going to be. Uh, it's going to be Stone Cold Steve Austin because he breaks the glass and just walks through it. He already works for them. It's not forbidden at all. You're right. Well. This is so there's just one person? They just want one forbidden door entrant? One key card? Um, I mean, that's what they said. One retinal scan? Not multiple? Not six? Not seven? They just want one? They think one's going to shape the earth? Um, Let's see. Do we have any official thing from them? What was the... Uh, I should have done this ahead of time. Uh, what was the thing about the, the rumor that went around? Like, what was, I'm trying to figure out what the exact language was. I don't know. I mean, we've got Brock Lesnar as the WWE champion. We've got Roman Reigns as the other champion. And uh, the other one. Th- this has to be someone that we have to truly believe. Oh, my God. They might fight one of those guys for one of those two world titles. Right. With at WrestleMania on one of those two nights. Um, yeah, so uh, WWE is reportedly planning a major surprise entrant for the men's Rumble match. Um, according to WrestleVotes.com, what the fuck? What is this nonsense? Um, the company's attempting a forbidden door entrant, which means a participant will be a wrestler not currently signed to WWE, comes after it was reported that they had talks with AEW regarding future projects. Now, of course, uh, we've talked about how WWE has reached out to AEW about just getting people to do interviews and stuff for documentary series. Cause it's like, have you Even have broken skull sessions and that too? Yeah. We've already seen a, a Chris Jericho at a, a, a broken skull session. Um, uh, as we talked about all last week, Mickey James, uh, impact knockout champion has been announced. Um, and so clearly the, uh, the, the door is open according to them and they want a, uh, a big, a big name to come through. 
Hmm. So I guess our that doesn't work for them. I guess our task today is speculating who that big name is. I think a good way to speculate is by doing some eliminate. Oh, you had to go to the bathroom? We just took a break. You couldn't have done that when we were on the break? Oh, I'm doing it right now. <laughs> oh, is that why you changed to the Bash at the Beach? Because it's sandy down there? You could just bury it? Yeah, I, d- I dug a little hole. I'm like a cat. <laughs> oh, people litter. Right in the sandcastle. I'm making a moat that you don't want any part of. Um. By the way, we forgot to say hello um, and congratulate and just honor our current reigning PWP world champ, Andrea Beeler, a.k.a. Pollen Hate. All hail Pollen Hate, our current PWP champ. There's her name right up there. All hail. So by eliminating, we got to look at, you know, some big names that we may not be thinking about currently all the time. And the way that this is structured, if we're going by the rules of it's a forbidden door entrant, it's someone that doesn't work with WWE or currently works at WWE, right? right. So Undertaker. Right. You got to eliminate him or it's it's like, oh, he's he's still with the company, but. He's not an active member, but it's like, no, no, no. That's not forbidden in any way. That's not someone from somewhere else. That's not a Goldberg. He still works with the McCain. Um, The Rock, even. You know, John Cena. Like, these are people who aren't active wrestlers, but they are, for all intents and purposes, WWE employees. Always welcome to jump in at any point to make things happen. Right. Um, Sometimes actually called upon other times like, hey, uh, you know, if you just want to come back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. Right. So there's a few things that I that I'd like to consider here. And that is um, one, people who have been in WWE before, does that make it um, better? Like, is it like, oh, if Chris Jericho, for example, who we've already seen on WWE Network as Chris Jericho in AEW, I'm pretty sure he was mm-hmm. AEW world champ at the time. Um, uh, you know, sitting on Broken Skull Sessions, he comes back and he's Chris Jericho. If Pac is the name, which I don't think it will be, but like... He wasn't champ at the time. I don't no, he wasn't? Okay. I, think I, I apologize. I digress. It was but, Moxley or Omega, right. I think. So in any case, like, if... Uh, like, what I'm getting at is like, if a Pac comes back, right. it's like Adrian Neville returning to WWE. It's... It's that's tough. It's tough. It's not the same thing to me, even if they are an employee elsewhere. If Ruby Riot shows up in the women's as Ruby Riot, it's like, yeah, okay, they let her come spend a night here. Um, but it's it, you know, it feels more. Uh, if John Moxley shows up as John Moxley, that to me holds a lot more weight than you know, somebody who's just who they are already or going back to their name. Cause Chris Jericho is him in both. Right. Even Christian Christian's like, all right, he's still, he's Christian. Yeah. He's got the cage at the end, but he's Christian. But the cage part didn't become bigger than Christian overall. So right. well, it's the same name enough. Yes, exactly. But I would think that if it were a Pac, right? Like if it, if it was him, that that is the, the line where you go, no, I get it. You, you called me Adrian Neville here, but I'm Pac now. Right. So I'm coming in as Pac. I'm not going to be Adrian Neville again. I'm not having a cape. Right. I'm not doing that. Like you're going to play the other song and we're going to do it that way. You're going to call me a bastard. (laughs) Cause I'm in AEW. This is what is the appeal. We're doing that. Right. So I think for the most part, that's what it would be. If it was any former AEW person, like even a even a Rusev is coming in as Miro, right? Because he's AEW's Miro. Look at him; right. like we knew him as Rusev, but now things have changed, and he's right. uh, he's talking so, about God and is banging his wife. So let's start there. Let's start with former WWE employees coming home, right? According to WWE, because that's exactly how they'll put it. Um, um, right. Jericho, I think, like you said, is the not to the orphanage. Jer- Jericho is the obvious or Juvie. One. There's two that got put out. Um, actually, both I don't know both by Jericho, Z- both by Zach Ayafuso in the chat. Oh, um, one is sort of like, yeah, okay, this would be un- unexciting, but would be big show because we know he left in you know good, good standings. It would be like it would kind of be a feel who like cares. a lot of people don't know that he left, right? Sure, <laughs> so they'd be like, but he wrote fucking big show again. Oh, Zach Ayafuso writes Cody, and then he wrote talk about Whoa. talk about a heel move because if they are trying to make 
this would be good for both companies. Because that's the other thing is the question is, is who's going to come and do this that's going to be good for both companies? That's not going to be right. just great for WWE because it gets the AEW fans to tune in. Um, Because Cody would be one where you come through as Cody Rhodes, guy who started AEW, and then he gets to go back to AEW, and then they get to tell a storyline of like, how dare you betray us that way and go wrestle for fucking Vince. Like that's, it would, it's, that would be really good story. I'm going to, that's fantastic, Zach. I would be so excited about that. I feel like some internal people will go, Jericho, Jericho would be great. He's a huge name. Right. People would be very excited. And then someone should go, yeah, but have you seen him wrestle yeah. or his doll hair? Like, no, well, I get what you're saying, but we shouldn't get him because it won't ultimately work. Right. Here's and be great. Here's the thing, though, is WWE just fired so many people that they now have the budget to do one of those augmented reality things for that spot in front of his hair where he usually just wipes the chocolate pudding. I agree with you, but they've always had the budget. Right. Right. That's true. Uh, by the way, he went back to his fucking blonde hair the next week. Oh, really? How much shit? Because the internet. Online, I'm sure. Ah. Yeah, because because of the internet, oh. Jericho went back to blonde. You know what? Seth, Every now and week. then, I do think that fan entitlement and internet people can be the fucking worst but every now and then we get sonic's teeth fixed and jericho goes back to being blonde so it's like it's a very slippery <laughs> the two slope. greatest accomplishments yeah. of the internet but we also ended up with that fucking sonic the hedgehog and chris jericho's hair we also ended up we with have the it fucking you know we also ended up with uh the snyder cut so let's not get ahead of ourselves um fuck off that movie's amazing right, so who who else what other former i i, I agree that hold on let's 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 not let's not just sure. I was go through this. I was gonna we got, let's go back to Cody. All right. Yes. Well, I was gonna actually finish up on Jericho real quick by just saying, like, okay. I think we that said who else? I think that Jericho is not surprising. That's the thing. Is I think Jericho is kind of a safe bet. It's like a guy who's WWE still has no problems with. Like he everybody seems to like him. He's a big enough name. He doesn't have to do a lot. He can just come back. They can play, break the walls down. They don't have to play his Judas thing and fans will still go crazy. You know, like I, I think that it's a safe one. It's a safe one. It doesn't as out of it as Jericho is. I think he's would still see enough that it doesn't do him a service to go to WWE in his current role. If he was less champion and not the champion, right. but just being that persona and a bad guy it'd be great because then he comes back to AEW and people boo the shit out of him. Right. And it's like, what do you expect? I'm the biggest star. Everybody wants yeah. me. I'm going to go wherever I want him coming back as a good guy. No, it's only going to be like, well, fuck you, dude, right. you were here yeah. and you went back. It wasn't broken skull. Of course, you're going to sit down and talk with stone cold right. and tell stories and mention this place. That's cool. Right. We like that. That's all right. But that's a, that's a, that is a no win move for him. It's just a quick paycheck. Right. And I don't, as much as he, like, most people would just take it. I don't think it's smart long-term for him to do that. Um, Cody, though. Cody. Cody's fascinating. He hadn't thought about that one at all. That is, and he's questionable because everybody's still going like, what is with you, dude? Are you a heel or not? And he's going like, no, I'm not. I'm a I'm a good guy. People love me. Now, if he's all doing this as an act, if he's truly creating this masterful thing that we all buy into, right. and then he becomes full blown heel, it's the perfect move for him. Yeah. To go to WWE to do that. And of course we want something with triple H and all that, but even if we just get him going back and showing up and doing it and the crowd reacting to then see whatever happens on dynamite would be amazing. And, and then if he's even does something like, you know, I said that I could never fight for the world title. Huh, I also said I wasn't going to go to WWE. So <laughs> I'm changing this rule right. or, or like it can little it could be part of his character of like, yeah, I said I couldn't fight for the world title here. And so I went and right. I went and tried to get, become the more contender at some place where I could be world champion. And he could, right. you know what I mean? Like, and he is one of those names where the other part of this, we talked a little bit about last week uh, with Mickey James and like, does he get very far? Is it sort of like, 
I do think that there are some people whose names we can come up with today who I think if they do show up will be in the final four because WWE's not everybody talks about how they're like really up in their own ass, but they're not dumb. They know how important headlines are and how news making shit is. They always try to do it when it doesn't exist. Having Cody Rhodes. Yeah, but with big names. Having Cody Rhodes in the final two, you know what I mean? Or or final four rather, um, you know, that would be that would be something worth tuning in for. That would be crazy. That would get people while, you know, I know we joke about it. Oh, it's premium live events now. Right. Because it's truly not a pay-per-view. Should that, is that what, that's what we should call these live streams. The premium live Powski's events. Well, these are these are pay-per-views. Oh, yeah, that's right. So, technically. <laughs> um, that would get so much replay out of it. Yeah. That would get people going, well, shit, I'll, I'll turn on Peacock or I'll do the five bucks. I'll watch the YouTube clip. I will check out what this was. Right. Because that's crazy. Right. That's absurd. That's crazy. And then tuning into the next show. Now, does WWE get an additional thing out of that afterwards, other than just the rumble the replays. surprise if they have Cody? That's a tough one. Whether that's then negotiation, like, well, then we want you for Mania or, or, this or, or, or Monday Night Raw, just the next night kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Oh, wait, not next I don't night. Know if I'm sorry. G- get that. Rumble's on Saturday this week, right? Or this month. I forgot about that. Oh, okay. Um, but yes. Oh, because it's that long? Right. Um, uh, Andrea no, Beeler, uh, current champ, Pollen Hate in the chat says, does he come out to his AEW theme or does he go back to WWE and just come out to Smoke and Mirrors? And then Zach Ayafuso follows up. Stardust, actually. <laughs> oh, God. I do, I, do love, I do love that Stardust song. <laughs> Stardust is pretty great. Um, also, the entire chat, I have to address it because they're just going crazy. They're just yelling, send hook. That's all they're yelling. Yes. <laughs> they're just yelling send hook. I fucking I'd lose my shit over that. That'd be amazing. Um, hook would hook would not work <laughs> for a WWE crowd. He would impress for sure. They'd be they'd be thrown, but they wouldn't know who the fuck he is. Right. But he would definitely make a great moment with no reaction. Yeah. Um but let's uh, let's go back to some of these AEW people cuz you know, again, People who have been in WWE, who've gone AW, have done something different, who would make for a good surprise. Because there are, again, we there are some names I don't that I wouldn't be surprised about. In fact, people on the chat have said Daniel Bryan, aka Brian Danielson. That one I very Oh my god. You can't, because everybody will have an aneurysm. In what way? If you're bringing back Daniel Bryan as Brian Danielson on WWE television. And then trying to say that over they, and over again, you can't. Here's the Everybody thing: is, like, they won't. He's a okay. He's Brian. Dan, you'll know him as. Oh, but currently he's. Uh, and then just brains will start leaking, and then everyone will be like, "Oh, Corey Graves is going to come back." He's like, "No, he just died of an aneurysm. He tried to explain all this shit." I, I here's the thing though: is I do think in that instance, they don't. They just call him Daniel Bryan, and Daniel Bryan goes like, "Yeah, I get it. That's where I'm. That's like I think his name is." So interchangeable no. in his, you know, you don't think so. You think he only does it if you call him Brian Danielson because the negotiation with this is with AEW and it's, well, we're acknowledging the current person on our current show and saying the name of where we are. Right. So you don't go back and change his name. You can say it once to say he was this, but now he's this because that's what everybody else is doing. Right. So you got to play by our rules if we're going to play too. Right, I understand that. that. Yeah, yeah. I, makes I would insist that that I, I I would say like, yeah, you're not calling him Daniel Bryan. You could say he was, but now he's Brian Danielson. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, but I don't think that one's likely. Yeah, I don't think it's likely, and because, I also just don't think it would be surprising or interesting because it wasn't that long ago that he was there. <laughs> like he literally this past Mania, you know what I mean? Like it, it seems like, you know. It would just not be that surprising. It would be like, all right, cool. I'm glad that, you know, that they're still friends. But um, yeah, this guy's on top everywhere. That makes sense. Yeah. In in the other similar to Big Show, Mark Henry, I could see being like, well, the name Mark Henry, you don't have to change nothing. He's here, but not a big deal. That's, it wouldn't be as like, no, it wouldn't feel surprising or big or exciting. Yeah, it doesn't. It. 
Yeah, well, last in WWE, he was one of the many Ortons was on TV with him. Right. And then he was gone, and we saw him on the little wheelie thing on one knee. Right. We don't have a, a great lasting impression of him in WWE. Right. And in AEW, he doesn't do a whole lot. Right. So there's no big threatening presence of, oh, shit, he took off the suit jacket and dropped the mic, and he's going to come and fight. There's nothing There's nothing there. Um, I'm going back to look at the... the just the song. The, the song is great. The song, yeah. I'm going back to look at the AEW roster to kind of look at some of the AEW talent that have been in WWE. Now, here's a would, sneaky one. I'll give you go one. Go ahead. You know, with former champ, and, you know, he's taking time off to heal his injuries, and we're forgetting Kenny Omega. Was Kenny Omega in WWE ever? No, I'm just okay. saying Kenny Omega. You made me sure. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. I mean, Kenny Omega is one of the two people that I think would be like the smartest thing for AEW because they're people who the WWE audience may not be familiar with. Um, my two picks would be Omega and Hangman as far as like send, okay. send two dudes who are very much AEW talent whose names WWE doesn't, doesn't have a different version of that mm-hmm. you know what i mean like and let and guys who could also perform right alongside if not better than a lot of the roster we're probably going to see in this match um and you know that that i think is good for business on AEW and good for wwe those, those are the two that haven't worked for wwe there's still a lot of others that have been there but i feel like as far as the two aew talents who it's like send these guys because also it won't feel like um they're both just a dude for the most part. Like, I don't know that Darby Allen would be the sort of thing because it would be exciting and fun for us, but he's so unique and so interesting that I kind of feel like WWE would be like, no, people are going to be like, I got to see him again. (laughs) I got to, you know, like there's a level of like, there's a level of like, I can't see them going with somebody who's so unique that might overshadow some other things occurring in the rumble. And the land of the giants will, I mean, he's exceptional against right. big dudes. It still comes down to who's booking it. Right. So the, the construct of like, uh, yeah, I see him. He's small and weird, but he's going to get thrown out by the Omos in right. 30 seconds. Right. Of course. When it's like, no, you want him in yeah. for a while. Cause he's going to do amazing, cool shit. And they might not do that. They might just go, well, we want the name and we don't see it in him. Right. So we're not going to treat him. We're not going to write to the best of his ability. Right. Right. So that's why I would go like, Ooh, let's not do Darby because he's not a big enough star for everyone to react in the same way, like an Omega or a, a, a page where you go, wow, he's a little bit bigger and I've heard he can do shit. So go do some shit right. for, you got like nine minutes. Go ahead. Right. Um, yeah, and I, I, and so that's why I think there's a lot of people that fall into that exact category. That like not quite big enough for us to be a big deal to the WWE fans. That will probably just get lost and probably just end up, you know, uh, like you said, getting thrown out early by somebody who we don't like, and it'll 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 be it'll leave a sour taste in our mouth, and it won't be good for right. anybody. It's not gonna be good for WWE or for for AEW. Um, and I feel like that's a lot of the the AEW kind of talent pool is in that sort of realm like i mean it's so can i throw another one out yeah to you? please do so in story this has been going on for a little bit so there's there's a couple story elements here of mjf right mjf has been starting to drop and i think oh, it's 2024 shit. right he's been starting to say like we'll see when contract negotiations start happening in 2024 of where I'm going to be. Right. He's been running from punk every chance he gets. He's not fighting him in a match. He uh, brought up recently the Miz, you know, well, there's that. And then more recently it was, uh, you know, I could someday I'll, I'll main event WrestleMania. Right. Uh, And then punk like did the, yeah, on night two of a buy one, get one free. Like it was a whole big thing, but the him duck and punk to not have a match because he'll he'll go main event wrestlemania he'll win the rumble and be out right he could go and then not have to fight punk at all he 
is seeking something somewhere else. Um, again, I if it feels like it's really well suited for a bad guy. Well, it there it, it depends because I think that it's suited for a bad guy to go back to AEW and say screw AEW because then we all go boo, right? But the right good guy is it's it is sort of that just fantasy thing where it's just like he showed up, we loved him, we loved that he was there, and when he comes back to AEW, we might not even mention it. Do you know what I mean? And it won't really affect them. But the the might part, and it all depends on who they go up against and what happens, true, right? True, of course. That's tricky. Part. It still might be, why do you have lipstick on your collar? Right, right. <laughs> she, you know her. Right. You know her. It's yeah. okay. Yeah. It's Lorraine. Oh, your first girlfriend? <laughs> yeah. But it's, it's okay. Yeah. But MJF has... I mean, if they don't give him a mic, first off, that's like, well, you just brought him in to wrestle. Yeah, that's, that's not, which that's not the whole thing. Which also is kind of part of why I feel like it might not be that, just because the rumble is they might just want like the music, the pop, and come out and get into the ring. Whereas, like that dude talks, know, unless like he got unless he's entrant number one, the Royal Rumble, or number two, the first one is the Miz. <laughs> right although the Miz is already oh. or is already busy he's probably not gonna be in the rumble um but like somebody you know somebody that's been brought up and then number two is mjf god the of all things i don't want to see Miz versus MJF. <laughs> sure but you know i just think it would be funny because it would be you know something that was mentioned on the other program but yes um but i think i think mjf works on so many surreal levels and what could be because yeah there is some truth i think in what he's saying well yes he's probably going to be an AEW guy for the long term foreseeably but he's probably smart enough to go well i'm not gonna fucking shut a door if they're gonna throw me a crazy amount of cash and say that they want to use me yeah um he'd be He'd be amazing in that role to step in, have some mic time, trash talk everybody. Everybody goes, who the fuck is this guy? Mention CM Punk. Say he's going to win WrestleMania. Right. He's never going back to AEW again. Yeah. And he's here for life. Gets tossed out and, and then like, I hate this place. Yeah. I don't know. And that's the thing is he could get tossed out by a guy like Omos and it would actually make it would it would make it funnier. It would like it would make it like, yeah. It yeah. Be like, you, so got, many you got thrown out by works. Omos. This guy's never been. He's, this guy's terrible. Or anybody that that you go, we want them to have that, uh, like, yeah, rah, 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 WWE. Right. Because sure. you threw that guy who was invading us. Right. And, and, and tossed his ass out. Um, yeah, well, it's just because we're talking about him and because he's so entwined. What if Punk showed up one night? That'd be... It would be, be so weird. I'm trying to make sense. I know of it, it, it wouldn't make any sense for punk. And I don't think it would make any sense for a W because punk is the one thing that they have where it's like, Oh, look at this motherfuckers. We got CM Punk. It's like, well, I just saw him in a Royal Rumble. <laughs> but, I, I feel like though, this is what, if, if, if CM Punk did this one thing coming out, right? The music hits, everything happens. People are like, what the fuck was happening? And if he comes out, and he just looks at everybody and then looks at the rumble, looks at the sign and all that and goes, hmm. Right. Like, like a, why not? Sure. And then goes and does it, gets tossed out or whatever happens. And then he goes like, hey, give it a shot. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. Right. That's the same thing else. Doesn't do clobbering time or any no, of that, no, no. Just, but just like a, eh. and then shows that up at AEW and goes, why don't they give me a call? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I nothing else to do. <laughs> It was Saturday night. Ape, Look, I, I Ape, got back into wrestling in a big deal. And I just thought, well, why not? Ape went out with her friends. I had nothing better to do. It didn't work out. I mean, she's I'm just, here, aren't I? just trying to avoid Cole Cabana for a night. <laughs> yeah, there's so many things he could say that people would be like, all right, right it's fine. <laughs> yeah, and that's the thing is I think like Punk could get away with it as one of the good yes. guys who just, and that's kind of like, he could be one of the guys who would just go like, yeah, it was fun seeing him over there for a night. And it's not that big of a deal. Um, but that's the difference. I think a heel can I'd turn it into a story. I want to see whoever it is, like Tony Khan, or whoever goes right. like, so they mentioned you. Would you Would you want to go back? Right. And seeing the reaction of whoever taping him, just like laughing in his face going, 
Have you not heard a fucking word I've said? <laughs> right. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's a pretty it's a long shot, I think, by uh, by mile. But it's something to fun to speculate. Yeah, um, for sure. What other AEW pre WWE talent? I mean, the undisputed era characters wouldn't be surprising. They were just there two days ago, and it wouldn't really matter. And they didn't use them on the main roster anyway. So. Well, yeah, I was gonna say it's more surprising that they made it to the main roster right. to do a thing. Um, um, and we're gonna reserve a little bit of time for non. I was gonna say people, yes, right? yeah, yeah. We we're, we're okay. still good on time here. Uh, thanks to the new Let's format. See, who, who uh, Andrade I, would be sort of like all right. Just yeah, keep, then there'd be like weird Charlotte chance, yeah, right? Because yeah, they split yeah, yeah. and all that shit. So it's like yeah, it, there, there's, there's, they didn't. He didn't do anything to warrant um, change. Like, right. right. It's you. Yeah. You went to AEW, but nothing. You didn't have a drastic character change. You didn't have a monumental match. You didn't have something that changed everything about you that makes it different that you're here now. Right. Right. Like Robin didn't become Nightwing. So for him to go to the Justice League or the Teen Titans, like, whoa, you're fucking Nightwing now? What is this? Sure, sure, right, yeah. Like, like nothing, there's no change. Hence, like, a Paul White or him or Mark Henry where it's like, well, there's, we have nothing different about you. Right. Makes it hard to to be excited for that. I like it, like it, even a, a Miro where it's, yeah, sure, you're different yeah. and I think you're a much better version, but it's so hard to convey all of that within this time of a rumble. Um, What about uh not Dustin Rhodes. What about Gold Dust? <laughs> I just feel bad that he has to put on the fucking one suit again. I mean he kind of already wears it, he just doesn't have sleeves on this one. It's not that different from what he's rocking. I guess that's true, yeah. Then he's got to paint his full face. That's what I feel bad about. Um by the way, it's not we're we're not in the news section, but we're still dropping news. Andrew Beeler in the chat says, Wait, did you just say Charlotte and Andrade split? Is that for real? Question mark? I mean, there was chat on the Discord quite a while back there that uh, that that is the heavily strong b- b- rumor with legs that they are not yeah together anymore. Um, somebody that I don't know. It's this is an instance where I don't know that it would be good for AW. But it, the fans would go bananas and it would just be one of those like if WWE wanted to get on fans good graces and if he wanted to do it, of course, Eddie Kingston. Dude, just because it's like, hey, that's the promised land right there. You know what I mean? And even though this is my home, AEW is my home. I made it like I I've wrestled in every fucking company. <sighs> How do you how do you do that one with like everybody's a sellout? Everybody's a sellout. You're all sellouts for going there. That's sports entertainment. I don't like any of that. It's true. He has been I'm a wrestler. He has been the most maybe vocally ag- uh, it's, aggressive against WWE. But I was gonna say like it, in the same way that we speculate about Punk, like uh, wanting to make this scenario work. Why well, I don't think it's likely, but I think what you'd do right is. Basically, he's there to fuck up the rumble. Right. Is he's, He goes out. He does the thing. People react. He doesn't talk, which I know is a crime, right. but he wrestles. He does the thing, tries to eliminate some people, eliminates some people, right. and then at some point gets eliminated and then goes like, oh, oh, is that? Okay. Right. And then doesn't do it in the traditional way where people go back in the ring, right? Right. And then start tossing people out like... You you start playing dirty, kind of the Hogan Sid thing, but like anybody who's leaning over, like you grab the you like a riot, you fucking grab them wherever you can, you and you pull them out, and you run to the other side and try and grab somebody. You just try and grab limbs and stuff until so many referees and stuff grab you, and WWE wrestlers haul you out of the building. Right, play it like an invasion, sort of. That it's well, if I didn't win it, then I'm gonna fuck it up for all these guys, and at least pulls out one huge name. Right. Right, yeah, that is a that is a yeah, get, potential get, like get, a Drew. Yeah, I was gonna or say, somebody. and somebody who's like a real WWE babyface too. It's got to be like a Drew. Perf- Drew would be perfect, or Big E, or or you know, like it's got to be one of those. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Th- that he just starts fucking up the Rumble. Yeah. Um. So then he can go back to AEW and goes, "Yeah, I got the call. There's, I didn't. I thought I was gonna win, but I made sure yeah. this guy, this guy, this guy didn't win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Um, yeah, again, another one that I don't see happening, but fun to speculate. There's another former WWE guy who I don't know that the name quality, he's he's in that like nobody will care phase, but if they're just like, let's show people that we're willing to work. What about Jake Hager, a.k.a. Jack Swagger? <laughs> he can do some push-ups. He, he could did, play he his did, not has a don't tread on me. His not rage against the machine song. Oh boy. Do him and Cesaro just hug? What do they do? Do they team up? Maybe. Why not? Boy, if that if that were the forbidden door entry. Right? Could you imagine? That would just be the biggest. Oh well, fuck you. I'm done. Right. You paid him more money? Oh, Jesus. That would be disappointing to say to say the least. Um, in that same category, we can have Evan Bourne come back. <laughs> Matt Sadal. Just look. the only the only way that that's a fun moment is all at all is if he gets in the top rope to do a shooting star press and then goes like no 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 wait I learned that's a <laughs> right. terrible idea right, right 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 I'm just gonna kick a dude. Um, here's a baby face that hasn't been with the company before that. I don't know WWE would be into, but it would be another one of those, like we would all just have a good time yeah. and he could play it as if like he literally just wandered in here. And that is orange Cassidy. God, just like walks in. Oh, look, there's a rumble <laughs> happening. Looks around. He like, doesn't recognize anything. And he's like, kind of like the, what you said about punk. They're like, all right, I guess I'll walk up to this ring right now. <laughs> and it can literally be like, who is this guy? Where did he come from? How did he get in here? That's a bit of the Darby effect, yeah, right? You, you then might be right. Going, I got to see him. Well, shit. What is it? What? What is this? What's happening? Um, that that would be super weird and funny. I it, it's a joke that I feel like the WWE audience won't get right in time, especially yeah. if he starts doing the kicks and stuff. People are like, huh? Yeah. As I look through, uh, uh, more names like this come too. That would be funny. Is of course entrant number ten. Hi, Dillinger. Oh, God. Sean Spears. Uh, by the time we're recording this, uh, we've already seen Sean Spears versus CM Punk, and I don't want to see Sean Spears versus CM Punk. Great. Because I don't want to see Sean Spears. Um, that's I'm kind of at the end of my roster with former WWE people as far as like like Tony Nese is in there. Obviously, like the mm -hmm. the FTR those sorts of people who you just know like there's not a story there but there's one name which WWE loves just grabbing folks that make people go hey you remember member berries sting what about sting he's already you know in the hall of fame he's like you know he's they own the majority of the library of which you can watch him wait a second is Seth Rollins in the men's Royal Rumble? No, he's facing Roman, which is why I would say Dean Ambrose would not show up in the Rumble because I feel like there's no way WWE would bring back would bring John Moxley in and not be like, well, we have to have him stand there and look at Seth and Roman again. Well, as long as Seth Rollins isn't in the men's Royal Rumble, then I can be okay with this you idea don't want him to, to retire him again. No. <laughs> Um, oh wait, I'm sorry. Boy, it, I, I I I forget. I have to. I apologize. I've ignored the chat for the past few minutes because I've been looking at this roster. But uh, Orange Cassidy meets our truth, and that is <laughs> that is well done. Uh, oh my Gil and uh, Andrew Beeler said the exact same thing. Like that would be very fun. That would be great. That'd be a fun m m rumble moment. Because again, it might be this might be that. It might be like oh, we're gonna open the forbidden door, but just for like a laugh, <laughs> you know, like not like not for the thing that you. Because I do think there's definitely a hierarchy here, like we've talked about. I do think like the Omega, the Hangman, the you know, like the the you know, champs essentially, Cody. I, I think you know it's it's. I I imagine there's still a, a woman they're trying to go after somewhere, right? Sure, of course, for right. bigger than Mickey James, because they they certainly always want a surprise. Right. They may not always go in for multiple surprises, which is fine. I you can't promise too much. Yeah. And set the bar too high, but plus they got to get. They're trying to get Brandy Rhodes. Everybody knows that. That's what they want. They want to sure. get Brandy back. They want Eden. <laughs> that uh, you have to have people talking about it when people are not saying nice things about them. Currently, the product is very stale. They're on the way to Mania. They have to have something to get people watching and talking about them in a positive way again. Yeah, yeah. So 
Um, that's why I think the, definitely for the men's, I don't think it's small potatoes. I don't think it is like an orange no. Cassidy or, and that's, um, something like that. That's kind I'm of, sorry, people. I don't think they go for Chuck Taylor, Chuck Taylor, <laughs> um, or Beretta or, you know, Trent's there, mom. I don't know. Or, there is something to be said about hangman Adam page as the AEW champion. Like that would be something unique would be like, there's the champion trying to collect our title. And like, you know, he's a threat because he's a world champion elsewhere. Of course, like you said last week, probably not going to let him come out with the belt because I don't think Mickey's going to come out with her knockouts title, but maybe we'll be wrong. Yeah. And he's another one where it's the fans perception right now is it's kind of split. It's there are a lot of people that love hangman and a page and others going, yeah, he's not really the champ to me. Right. And either because of uh, booking or matches or whatever it may be. I feel like him going to WWE probably still lessens that in AEW okay. fans' eyes where it's like, and dude, just be here. Be the champ. Omega as a character could get away with that more like, to your point about the sort of like heelish I'm everywhere or whatever. And somebody yeah. made a point earlier uh, that like the casual wrestling fan who watches only WWE probably still at least heard of Kenny Omega. They might not have heard of Hangman Adam Page. Right. Yeah. But um Yeah, Omega's got more. Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of at the end of my 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 rope here with rosters of AEW people who I think are th- like the potentials. I do think there's a short list and I do think that the very short list is Jericho, Cody, and then Big Show or Mark Henry, like the former WWE people who WWE just likes to put in a rumble. No, oh, god, that would just that I know it would be, be a letdown. A dog fart. But here's the thing is WWE's they like you said, they don't always have their finger on the pulse, so that might be the wet fart that we're getting. I think MJF's in the top. Oh, MJF. Yeah, I forgot about him. MJF would also be good because you're right. Who else has been just name dropping WWE shit on television? Mm-hmm. Um well the we know that they've been talking to AEW about, you know, working together because the documentary stuff. But mm-hmm. all of these reports about WWE looking to open the Forbidden Door don't actually mention AEW. It just says Forbidden Door is the word that keeps getting thrown around. So right. it might not even be an AEW person that they're after. Um, ROH currently doesn't have doors. Right. So. Right. A lot of companies don't have doors in fairness. <laughs> Most of them, unless they're like the big garage hangar. Impact Wrestling has doors. Uh, video proof. Um, are they, do they still have those same doors? Yeah, they have old employees names on. Great. Them, so. Fantastic. Um, there are some other names that have gone around the, uh, the, the, the wrestle sphere. One being Will Ospreay, current, uh, New Japan. One of the, ch- I can't keep track of the champions there. I think they just have the one world title, right? New Japan world champion. Will Ospreay is a name. Is he though? Is he the See, champ? No, I, you made me, I second guessed myself and I thought you were going to correct me. Yeah, because we didn't actually cover the no. uh, the fucking Will Osprey, um, currently signed the new. Yes, he is. Oh, former IWGP World Heavyweight Champion, so mm-hmm. he's not current, which maybe makes it even more doable because they're like, well, he's right. not the champ. Uh, Will Osprey is one of those people that I don't know will get the casual reaction out of a rumble but mm-hmm. that like you know the wrestle nerds would go absolute ape shit over wrestle nerds would go ape shit i think there'd be enough of reaction it's one of those things like an aj styles right yep. where it's uh why are we all excited he, well he comes out and the name on screen right. it's like i think i've heard of him but the second he gets in the ring he's obviously going to do something where everyone goes what the fuck is this guy yep. And gets everybody noticed. That one is a is a is a pretty good uh, contender as well. Right. I feel. And again, it's it it can be a one night thing where we don't where it's just like, hey, that happened, you know. Like, I it's he's not quite the you know Juice and Thunder Liger, but I think about when NXT brought him in just for like, we're gonna bring him in for a night for a pay per view. It's gonna be fun. We're gonna have someone fun wrestle him, you know. Like, um, I, he can be one of those. I feel like a lot of the New Japan roster could be that. Um, there's also been people who have switchblade Jay White working at impact, you know, 
Um, there's. I don't know if WWE is going to be cool with putting on a dude named Switchblade. Um, well, they might just not call him that nickname, but maybe. I mean, they already have uh, Slapjack. It's kind of the same thing. <laughs> um, uh, Hiroshi Tanahashi is the current champion, according to Gil in the chat. Um, and also and, according to Gil in the chat, he hates Osprey. Oh, really? He said, which takes me aback. Um, I'm trying to think of other. Uh, Japanese talent who I mean some of them have had experience with WWE as a company and working relationships when like CWC was a thing Mm -hmm. Um, trying to think of other you know names that would be not surprising to see but fun not surprising yeah that would like oh yeah that makes sense well I guess I'm having trouble following not surprising with Japanese talent but I guess so I know people are always hoping for Okada to show up somewhere right and I think whoever does that first it'd be it'd be really it'd be really huge and I think his presence you know if they do any semblance of an entrance of what he has and just what he how he carries himself the outfit his size his persona he is also one that if they gave it the right time and in, in the production, the way they do where it's like, he comes out, boom, presence, this people look at stopping in the rumble going like, who, what the fuck? Really? Seriously. And then him getting in the ring and make sure you have a couple of dudes that are even smaller still to just make him look that much bigger. Right. And I think that could be really impressive and that would get people talking. Yeah. I don't think it would get overall the, American crowd talking in the big way they want, but I think worldwide that would definitely bring them a lot of international attention that could be really cool for them. Um, Kota Ibushi is also like uh, uh, one of the former working relationship with WWE guys who Mm -hmm. like would probably get a big pot from the crowd out of the surprise and then, like you said, hit the ring and perform and people would be like, oh wow, this is fun. Alice Raider asked about the Good Brothers. Do you want to say it or should I? <laughs> you should say it. Oh, God, no. Why? Didn't you see any of their horse shit in AEW? Aren't you full? Um, <laughs> oh, man, I'm scrolling through. Uh, oh, I know who it's going to be. It's going to be Jonah. They're going to let Jonah <laughs> come through the forbidden door. Talk about a transformation. Talk about a guy who's who's really seen the other side of things and is ready to come back and is a I mean, seasoned veteran. What if uh what if they uh bring back Kenta Hideo Itami for a night just to have him do a GTS <laughs> and then immediately get thrown over the top rope? And break th- three bones in his body and go, God, <laughs> yeah, I se- this place. How did I, I tell you? How did I separate three shoulders? Um Hmm. One that I think could, could be really amazing had it had the timing been different, but currently Trevor Murdoch is the NWA champion, right? And I do like me some Trevor Murdoch. I don't think he's in his best of days. No, um, no, I think, and he he has been there before, but I think that'd be jarring on many a level. Yeah, uh, I think had Aldis still been NWA champion, and he comes out with that title. Absolutely. Nick Aldis. And, oh. and Mickey James is there. There could have been oh. a lot of interesting, cool shit that that would be a Monday Night Raw I would tune in for if they said, here's another couple we have and they're going to be on screen and they're going to be doing a thing. That would be amazing. That would be crossover interesting. If We're finally getting to hear all this on a bigger stage. If There could be a lot. I, I, and again, like you said, like Murdoch is great. And, you know, I, I, I want the best for him. But if NWA was smart, they would be like, oh, it, and at a house show, uh, <laughs> Nick Aldis defeated Murdoch for the NWA title. And an arm wrestling match. Yeah, uh, just to have just to have Nick Aldis come out with that championship title, which we've seen on WWE television in WWE, you know, in the archives and like, yeah. I mean, that would be and talk about a guy who could just carry himself in a way that would get everybody like, who is this? Mm-hmm. And I've said for ages that Nick Aldis is like the most WWE ready dude who's never been in WWE. You know, it's at it's, least to my knowledge. 
It's tough because I feel like he needs the title to go there. That's what. That's kind of what I think. In a, in a rumble scenario, I agree. In a lot of other scenarios, no. But in a rumble scenario, for the shock, for the forbidden door, all that, all those elements, he's got to have that title because otherwise, it's just oh, I heard about that dude. Yeah. Isn't he the guy that lost the title to the big drunk guy? Yep. It's the and there's some the way that he carries that title and the look and the suit. Like we've said it for years, like. There is a very short list of people who I think the NWA title like belongs on, which is what I love that they took that they that they cherish it so much and kept it on the same people for so long is like Nick Aldis is just <laughs> one of those dudes like, you know, had Eli Drake still been in that company, I'd put him in that same category. Like, you know, like there's certain people that you just go like, yeah, no, that's that's an NWA world champion. Yeah, same with uh, uh, Tim Storm as much right. as I enjoyed Tim Storm and I liked Tim Storm. Boy, I the the reaction is in there. If he was one of maybe three people or something like that, you know, right? But I I don't think the reaction is there for him, and I don't think he can necessarily wow in a rumble setting either. No, I think it would be mostly the like, hey, look who this guy is, and then hiding in a corner until he gets eliminated. Maybe eliminating right. one or two profile people, uh, high profile people. Um, uh, the chat just brought up Damian Sandow, aka Aaron Stevens. I don't know that that would be one of those just fun comedy things where it's like, oh, let's bring him back to do a fun, excuse me thing. It will do nothing for yeah. NWA. It, it'll just you're be welcome. You're welcome. Yep. Not excuse me. Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. You're right. That's Vicky. What did he? Uh... Oh, may I have? Didn't he say maybe? Shit. I'm... You're welcome. All right. I'm sure it wasn't just that. But uh, who else in NWA specifically? The the, uh, the unwashed masses. Um, that was us. To people as. That was us. Still, is there an is there an active roster list of NWA online anywhere? Probably. Select there, one other person that I I'd certainly love to. I mean, I fucking love this dude. He's so great. But again, the the time has passed of the of the of who he is as a as a draw and the attention and the excitement. A James Storm. Like if it was James Storm in Impact Wrestling, going for the title, being the redneck cowboy drinking, yeah, no, the beers yeah. and and sorry about your damn luck, that would get enough of a reaction and people would seem to be like that guy's fucking cool. I dig him, right? And it's just not there right now. Um, someone who we've danced around here, who also I feel like Fandango. Um, oh, Fandango would be great. Um who uh, I don't know what it would do for anybody and it might just piss more people off. But if you're trying to be the guy who changes G C G Z W, the fuck that one's called Matt Cardona, <laughs> Zach Ryder comes back. Um, and it would, ha- that's an instance where in what, what we're talking about, like MJF and people would, or Cody even would do in a W like he could do elsewhere. Of like, yeah, of course I was in the rumble because I'm at that caliber, you know, and like trying to turn, you know, indie pro wrestling companies into sports entertainment that would, mm-hmm. you know, kind of get behind his current shtick he's doing. You would love that. Yeah. <laughs> um, I would. Yeah. The NWA roster is sort of thin right now on, uh, at least according to the internet. Um, there's not that there's not some great names in there. Um, they can bring back Funkasaurus, obviously. Uh, that would be really entertaining <laughs> for everybody. Um, no, but you know, outside of what we mentioned, Macarona, Nick Aldis, um, JTG would just be a fun moment, especially since we lost. Yeah. You know, we lost Chad Gaspar. I feel like that would just be a like a hear the music and get everybody excited, and you know, the the days still employed signs in the audience. Um, Impact Wrestling's roster is also thin at the moment, also with just, you know, amount of star power at the moment of, uh, you know, who's doing what. Right. But there's one name who's their world champion right now that I think could be could be exciting. And I think people would be get behind him and be like, that was fucking cool. I was happy for him. Moose. Yeah. Moose would be interesting because he's one of those people that the Impact fans will make the other people get excited about. He's one of those people that I don't think everybody's going to immediately know who they are, but he's got a ton of charisma 
He's a giant man. He's, you know, the second he comes through the thing, if he's, especially if he's got the impact title on. And then the, you know, the other side of that is like, well, we had the knockouts champion. Yeah. Now we have the, you know, the impact world heavyweight champion. And I feel like that's some easy story to tell. Um, it's it's not as uh, sadly impactful as I think they'd want it to be. No. If it is the we opened the forbidden door and we did this and we got these names and people go, oh Moose and Mickey James. All right, well, shit. I thought you were gonna get everybody else because once you say it in a mystery way, then you're looking at all the other companies. And granted, they're not saying it directly, right? But we're capitalizing on it and just trying to fill the void with an episode. We, you know. We of course we're gonna go bigger. Yeah. Um. Well, yeah. I'm trying to think of other free agents out there, non-signed people. They're all people who WWE just let go. So it's it seems yeah. like it's not. It doesn't feel like it has that same clout. Like obviously, like Bray Wyatt. Sure, they'll have him come back for EC3. They, yeah, of course. EC3, they loved right? him so much the first time. Yeah, or second time. <laughs> um. So let's wrap it up with this here. Who do you want? Who's like your number one? This would be the thing that you would be, if they announced it ahead of time, even you would be like, fuck, I'm in that. That's going to be so great. I'm tuning in for this. Who would be the name? Jake, we're going to do two here. Okay. Yeah, let's, let's do, I got I have a few. What's, well, what's your short list? Let's say that. What's your well, short What list? I'm saying is we have that version, right? Yeah. Who's the one that's like, you just want it. And you'd be like, oh my God, this is amazing. And who's the one that you want? That you want that chances are nobody else really wants. <laughs> oh, okay. But you'd be like, fuck yeah, that's great. And then everybody else next to you goes, why are you excited about this? That one for me, I think it would be Heath Slater. Because <laughs> finally we could maybe get that 3MB storyline, oh, right? Oh, man, Heath Slater. Remember that moment he had? in the in, in the in, in the, uh, yeah, in the fucking Thunderdome? Oh. Pre Thunderdome, was that before the Thunderdome? Oh yeah, yeah I'm sorry, you're right. Was it was empty in arena a, in a empty dark arena. room. <laughs> yeah, all right. So you're the only person who would be excited about Heath. I'd like to think there's be some other people excited too, and it's and it's certainly not the big grandiose. Oh, we contacted all the companies yeah, we found. He, Heath is he con is he like contracted anywhere? Yeah, he's at Impact. He is an Impact guy. Oh man. But it's like, yeah, let's fucking do all the stuff with these three guys that I know you say it's a joke thing and uh, whatever, but it's like, no, we invested in it and they're all dudes and I want to see these matches and these stories. I So that'd be the, that'd be like the just for me. That's all fun. right. I have one that's just for me. Um, and it's simply just because, and this is predicated on the, on Corey Graves, not coming out of retirement and being mm -hmm. on the 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 commentary table is luchasaurus i want just luchasaurus as a commentator no 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 no, no. him as the the, the that would be funny too but him coming in the rumble <laughs> just cory going to the ring and then luchasaurus <laughs> going in and well guys let me tell you like, what the fuck kind of you know what we can understand him better than we can understand excalibur um i i just think it would be really funny to have the wwe commentary fucking make trying to make sense of what luchasaurus is especially if Corey graves is the what's hard to understand cole he's a fucking dinosaur <laughs> you know what i mean like what's so complicated right. about this he's from the the prehistoric era he's been on planet he's been on the planet earth he survived the extinction like he is just owning the shit and just being the mm -hmm. best version of Corey graves where he's like what's so problem what's so hard about this and then everybody else being like what? But wait, but he's a, he's inspired by loot. He's inspired by loot. Like, I think that would be entertaining for me and me only. I like it. Who do Zach, I Zach, want? Zach though? Ayafuso in the chat. I would pop for Heath Slater. Yeah, I think a lot of people would. I think everybody would pop <laughs> okay. for Heath Slater. Okay. I know I have particular tastes, so I didn't want to say for everybody. I think who I would want, though, after our, after our, very thorough discussion of all these people and all these scenarios. I think, I think I got to go with MJF and I know that's an answer for a lot of things, yeah, but no, I feel no, I, like, 
like no damage is done to anybody. It furthers storyline everywhere. It actually gets him to meet these WWE people. It involves so much more in his punk storyline. It makes that much more epic. It, it just makes it solidifies him more as a heel and it's a shocking moment. It, WWE gets this little boost. Yeah, that kid's going to be great no matter what. No matter where he works, it doesn't matter that he's going to be on the other show. I know we talk about the Darby effect of this or that, but it's it's a longer dive into like who is he and what else could there be. You're always going to watch an MJF clip if you're a fan. You've already seen promos and stuff. Right. Like there's no avoiding it. You might as well capitalize on the right. dude while you can. Um All right, well before I give you mine, what is just to add another third little pick here, who's the person who you expect it to be that you will be the least excited about? Least excited or flat out disappointed? <laughs> Whatever. However you want to like, like just like, all right. Yeah, great. This is what this is kind of not surprising. That would be Jericho. Yeah, I have the same answer for that. I thought we wouldn't have the same answer and that Jericho is going to Jericho be- would just be. Okay. Fuck. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we did it. Hey, way to go. Did you bring any of the inner circle here? No, right, yeah, yeah. want to do a shock. Um, so I I agree with you about MJF, but for the sake of giving it a different answer, I I I think Cody, because of a lot of yeah. this, because of the same reasons, I will be more excited for Cody because it means more that Cody goes there, because mm-hmm. literally he's the one who broke and like is one could argue yes, a lot of people started AEW. It's a big group effort, but one one could argue that Cody is the catalyst. Cody is the spark. He's the like that big thing that he wrote when he left WWE about how he felt and about all the shit and the characters. Like it feels to me like him going back as Cody Rhodes and where he got to after he left WWE, the American nightmare, or whatever he's fucking going to call himself. Like yeah. that to me would mean so much. And it would get, it would get eyes on WWE's product because we'd be like, what the fuck is Cody doing? That's crazy. Yeah. And it would also help AEW because of, like we said, Cody can s- s- play the heel or play the innocence when the rest of the locker room is being like, dude, what the fuck? Mm-hmm. Like, why would you do that? And he can be like, hey, you know, like, listen, I'm just, you know, I'm trying to, you know, I'm, I'm trying to. It's my I'm, reality show. Or it could be like literally he could start turning heels like, yeah, I have to put I have to bring eyes to this product. And I'm the I'm the face of this product. He could start playing that role of like. If it wasn't for me, AW wouldn't exist. And so I'm doing the best I can to keep the ship floating and blah, blah, blah. And, and I'm going to go and, you know, you know, I, I, I maybe I, what if I would have won? Would I went to WrestleMania? What, what would that have done? Like, you know, I think yeah. he can use it. I don't know that it weaves itself as well as with the MJF story, like you're saying, but I do it think does. It, I think it I does. Do think it would be really beneficial and good for everybody. It would be an instance where it's a win win because yeah. I think Jericho to me isn't isn't a win-win Jericho is a like no it, honestly it's a who gives a shit and a who gives a shit aw people aren't going to care WWE people are gonna be like yeah okay yeah so oh he got fat <laughs> right um well there you have it tons of fun speculation uh abound about the forbidden door maybe none of this happens maybe there's literally no surprise and none of it ever happens not but- one of these people that we mentioned happen nope. at all at all, Even whatsoever. Mickey James goes, I'm not going. Yeah, but uh, listen, it was still fun to speculate. It's always a blast hanging out here with you guys. Um, we want to hear everyone else's as well. That we do. So be sure to call the hotline. Be sure to check in on our Discord. Yeah. Both things totally free. You can be a part of it and interact. We want to hear your picks, why they would work out or how they're going to work into the whole situation. Let us know because the rumble is coming. Um, And so, uh, yeah, we are going to... Uh, head on over to the hotline section here. But before we do, I want to thank everybody who joined us live once again for the live stream. If you are listening to this in the pod feed and you were saying, you know what? I'm sick of hearing them yap about it and not participating. Head on over to pwpowskis.com. Click that Patreon link and um, uh, become a Patreon Powski, the lowest tier you get access to the live feed. Um, So you don't have to sign up for any of the big wigs. Uh, if you just want to tune in live, the lowest feed gets you that access. But if you do want to wrestle with the big wigs like our current PWP champ, Andrea Beeler, a.k.a. Pollinate, then you have to become a championship Palski 
uh, in which you will uh, get the opportunity to win that title from Andrea Biller on the first week of February. Yeah, it's a, it's super fun, and you unlock a, a lot of archival material as well, and that you have access to that is on our Patreon. All kinds of fun, great stuff. Um, so with that said, we're gonna head on over to the to the hotline calls. Thanks again, to everybody who tuned in live. Scott and Oliver, say goodbye to the live feed. Bye, everybody. Have an amazing week. 747-666-5606. That is the number to the Pro Wrestling Palski's hotline. Uh, open 24-7, 365, 364 on a leap year. Is that how that works? Um, and, uh, of course, if you go, I don't, I don't use a telephone. Who uses one of those old crazy things? I don't even know how to use the little thing that you spin and you hit the number and you put your finger in. I can't do that. Then simply record a voice memo on your phone and send that over to hotline at pwpalskis.com. That's hotline at pwpalskis.com. Scott Narver, you want to see what the hotline has for us today? I crave it. Hey, Palski, it's Wyatt from Cali here. A couple things regarding last week's episode. Uh, In response to who should be the on-air authority figure for NXT, excuse me, NXT 2.0, since he's already running the creative, there's only really one person who should be running it, and that's Bruce Pritchard, a.k.a. Brother Love. Because who wouldn't love that? And my second point is, there's really only one event that WWE needs to bring back as a two-night event, and that's the Brawl for All, because who wouldn't want to watch that with today's superstars? I mean, that'd be the only way I would watch WWE again, but that's neither here nor there. Any hoozles, wishing you guys a mediocre new year, and I'll speak to you guys later. Bye. Wyatt calling about um, William Regal getting let go and who should be the authority figure thinks brother love. I'm, I'm on board for this only if instead of painting his face solid red, he paints it all the different colors of the NXT logo. Oh, okay. I could get behind that. <laughs> um, and then oh. when he introduces people, na- their names. He goes, that's a really good name, right? Don't you really like that name? He like reiterates it. He tries to sell people on it. Sells people on every single idea. He's like, you know, the champion, I'd like to introduce you, Braun Breaker, which is a very cool sounding name for a wrestler, if I may say so. Don't you guys think so in the audience? I think so. Vince likes it. Don't you like it? <laughs> oh, I. you know what? I would get on board with Bruce Pritchard being the on-camera personality if into the writing it was just his character was just him desperate to please Vince McMahon who didn't like anything if that was the storyline if every time someone walked into his office he was just stressing out and he was like you gotta what can you what can you do to stand out more I, Vince is so he doesn't like this I need what do you what can you do do you, do you have any talents and if like that was the character oh man if only that was the character and that was the storyline <laughs> if only uh, I see what you did there Scott Narber um well, we're also talking about, he was also talking about two-day events like we were talking about a couple weeks ago. And he said the only event that needs to be brought back in SF2 Nights is the WWE Brawl for All. <laughs> I fucking love this. Who do you think modern-day WWE Brawl for All, who do you think would be in it? And who would be the Bart Gun? Who would be the one that fucks the whole thing up by winning it, takes out fucking Dr. Death? <laughs> right, takes out the guys that are like, well, clearly he's going to win it. And oh, shit, he actually knocked him out. I mean, is Brock in it? In which case, is he both characters? <laughs> I feel like you got to leave Brock out of it. Maybe Brock yeah. is the butterbean. Brock is the... Oh, right, right. The guy who wins has to face Brock and then gets murdered. Right, you fight him at WrestleMania and then everyone's like, yeah. all right, I know what I said about Brock in the past, but I'm pretty fucking excited to see Brock fight whoever. <laughs> right. I mean, it's like, who is the Bart Gun of right now? Like, who do you not expect? And it would be like, oh yeah, no, he ended up fucking... Like, Robert Roode won the whole fucking thing. <laughs> God, that boring guy? <laughs> like, I feel like Robert Roode is the first thing that comes to mind is like the modern day Bart Gunn. Who, okay, so who's who's that, which I guess that is pretty well answered, but then who's the other guy that, you know, not a Brock Lesnar, but who's the guy that you go, well, that, that guy's they, probably going to fuck some people up. And they, they put him in there to win. Yeah. Like, oh, they specifically put this person in there. Yeah. 
Um, who right now do they talk? Do they have anybody who was like a street fighter? Or like I'm thinking of like when Wade Barrett started and they were like, oh, he was a former Bill Knucker boxer. Yeah, look how ugly he is because he gets punched in the face. Is there a version of that right now? Somebody who's got an MMA background that's not Brock Lesnar, maybe? I feel like all those people are gone, like a Thatcher. Like Chad. Yeah, exactly. Thatcher. But like Chad Gable. Chad Gable, not in a brawl for all situation because he can't take people down. So that's, yeah, that eliminates all those people. I think maybe a Cesaro, but I go, man, he's not... Maybe yeah. Seamus. Maybe Seamus is the guy you go, okay, you know he's, he's going to fuck some people up. He even, he, they even, like, he, they were even dressing him like sort of a barroom brawler. Yeah. Yeah. No, Seamus would be the guy who they would be like, let's build the whole modern day 2022 brawl for all so that we can get Seamus in the spot. And then, and then in the first round, he gets beat. Oh, like, Happy Corbin knocked him out right happy away. Cor- oh, wait a minute. Maybe Happy Corbin is the guy. Maybe Happy Corbin is the Bart gun. <laughs> Could be. I believe I believe I believe he could probably fuck some shit up. Yeah, what well, he played football and just yeah. looks like a biker. He was also and... wasn't he also a, a Golden Gloves boxer? Oh, that's right. Yeah. Oh, so it's not as funny now. But no, it's not as funny. With the name of right. Happy Corbin, and he's like, "Cool, can we go back to Baron Corbin?" They're like, "No, no, no, Happy Corbin." No, why right. are we still staying with this? I legit beat the fuck what out if, of guys. What if it was like Rick Boogs? <laughs> Who like ends up winning the whole fucking thing? And as he throws his big haymakers, he goes boogs. Right. Um. No, you know who? You know. Never mind. You know who would be the guy that would that they would put in there to to make the whole thing victorious? It would be like Dabocado, whatever the fuck his name is now. Oh yeah, that would be the guy that they would put in there. Like we're gonna make this whole thing because he was clearly gonna beat everybody, and then he would get beat by Rick Boogs in round one. Mm-hmm. I love the Brawl for All. It's the best thing that's ever happened in professional <laughs> wrestling. That is one of my favorite episodes of Dark Side of the Ring. Um, and I would watch five feature-length documentaries about the Brawl for All. I'd only want the Brawl for All to come back if they brought back Enzo Amore. <laughs> oh, you say that. That motherfucker finds out a way to win and you would be so pissed. No, because someone's still going to hit him in the face and that's still rewarding. <laughs> Hey, fellas, it is Gil from the Bay Area, a.k.a. Goliathon, and I uh, watched uh, Wrestle Kingdom Night night 2. I watched it a little bit quicker than your cousin watches uh, Road Wild 97, I think, or 96. You know, they're they're all, you know, whatever. Uh, And um, I was wondering if you got a chance to watch any of it at all. It's been a week. Uh, There was... A pretty good match between Okada and Osprey. Osprey ended up taking the title, so he is now the official champion. Um, Osprey is a little bit whiny about it, but you know that's because he's a heel. Um, we had a really brutal death match between Tanahashi of all people and uh, Kenta. Oh my goodness! And Kenta, he is really worse for wear. Tanahashi is like the the John Cena of njpw so he's like squeaky clean he's the nice guy and he beat up on kenta it's really bad i don't you probably saw the um the injuries i posted in the uh discord but man he's got a big gash down the entirety of his back from the tables they use because they don't use really safe tables so i was wondering did you see any of this um i look forward to hearing from you thanks bye Gilbert Short, Goliathon, thank you for the call. I didn't get to it. I did look at what you posted in the Discord. Thank you for posting that, by the by. Um, that is gnarly. Uh, there's there's one image that I also just looked up right now, um, just trying to get a another look at it, where there's a just a big chunk of broken table, and then right. just, it looks like a horror movie, just this streak of blood going down it. Uh, it's it, it looks you you said it right horror movie it looks like one of those matches that um was probably very fun to watch and then afterwards you went like oh they i guess they did that they didn't have they didn't really have to do all that oh. <laughs> like you go like i feel bad for them yeah sometimes when it doesn't turn out to be as showy and it's right and it's more of i'm watching a crime <laughs> right oh no yeah. So I don't know which it, which it falls into, but no, I haven't watched any of the show. I, I Okada 
and Osprey sounds super fucking cool. Yeah, those were the two matches that intrigued me, and I I, I also have not seen any of it. Um, and uh, I, I just I'm a big Kenta fan. Um, and uh, despite the Cena of New Japan being in the match, I was just sort of like, oh, okay, it's gonna be a a New Japan death match kind of thing. Um, not that I wasn't interested in it, but it was just you know. Uh, not a priority. I haven't been watching a lot of wrestling, period, lately. And so, considering how little I watched of New Japan when I was watching every single day, it felt like uh, it's not surprising that New Japan kind of got pushed to the side almost entirely when I stopped watching a lot of wrestling. And I'm hoping with the return to Access TV and they're doing yeah. stuff, I know the YouTube's just never quite what I want it to be. No, the YouTube is rough. Because it's just recaps or interviews, and it's not... You know, in this day and age, he sometimes you got to post the full match from something, right? And I, and I I would wish they would capitalize on that more, just to try and get more of an audience. I get it; you don't want to give away the whole thing. That's totally fine. But you know, we talked about it a little bit uh, a couple weeks ago now. Of there's not an American app yet for New Japan Pro Wrestling uh, that you know to throw on the game consoles. Or something that's just user friendly. It's right. doing it through a laptop. If somebody else's login, and I am not good with it, or knowing what events has what and which key shows, so. Just a lot of it where it's like, oh, man, this just feels I'm already frustrated. It also I don't know. It what I'm also doing. just seems like one of those things where 2022, like, how do you not have like a contract with like Hulu or, you know, like or like one of these things where it's and I get that like wrestling promotions is tons of them. Um, um, and so you could say the thing about all of them. But like, I feel like New Japan's big enough to where like some company, even if it's like crackle or, or or you know like to be oh, or God, one of these crackle one of these companies though you would think at some point they would be like yeah let's give you the exclusive rights to the library or or to the new shows the mm-hmm. you know the uh, two two or three days after the paper yeah, or something the like the best that. of shows right yeah the, the yeah the recap ones where they kind of just go like here's the best of the fucking month or whatever like uh you would just think it would be available someplace more easily and it's i've gotten to the point personally where I, I did get, I'm, I have such wrestling burnout as a viewer that like, I'm not going through any extra steps to watch a thing. <laughs> like if I'm going to watch something, it's going to be because it's convenient. Cause mm-hmm. I don't have this, I don't have that like rich desire. Although I do feel like rumble season always gets me more and excited about wrestling of, of all brands, not just WWE, but like, I kind of just get more invested in it. Right. But for the most part, like if I have to do a ton of work to see the thing, I'm just not going to do it. And whether that makes me a shitty wrestling fan or not, I don't know. Ask people who review our program, but <laughs> it, it's convenience has played such a huge role in, uh, in what I'm watching at this point, because I'm watching so little of it. I think there's also something to be said that we, ah, I don't like to speak for people. So I'll say this for me for sure. I haven't watched, anything with anybody in such a long time with the exception of maybe my brother or you and a I friend or two like one thing like a pay-per-view summer slam yeah, no extreme rules extreme rules right, right 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 that was the last thing i watched with somebody yeah but those are the things that we watch that are already kind of there but if yeah. you know like i can think of a couple friends that maybe would want to watch a gcw show right and I would watch it with friends because that would be fun. I'm not going to seek out GCW on my own, but if it was right. three friends, we're going to order some food and just fucking hang out and have a good time. Yep. I'm totally down, but that yeah. is so far removed now because of obviously all the situations of all the right. bullshit going on that sucks, but that would always open up the net a little bit more. Why I wouldn't it's necessarily true. watch all these things all the time. Like I, w- there were times like we went and watched a wrestle kingdom the following day after a friend had ordered it on pay-per-view and we watched it, we stayed away from all the spoilers and everything. And it was right. super fucking fun. Yeah. It's the communal experience of it, which, which does help with like having our discord and stuff like that. But it is like, yeah, you still have to go out of your way to do the thing. I feel that way about like, there's like certain movies where it's like, I'm never going to go see this, but if I'm with a group of friends and they go, Oh, well, we want to go see this movie. You're like, yeah, sure. Whatever. It'll be fun. Like right. there is, it, it's that same sort of thing where the community kind of definitely helps in, in the shared experience, but. And it, and they, they, yeah, they make the excitement. And I, I, I feel like that's, I, I miss that. And I want that because that makes seeing those other things one. And then we go like, Hey, did you see that thing? No, tell me about this then. And I like that our listeners do that. I like that we have people checking out the indie stuff, the hardcore stuff, J- Japanese stuff. And it's all there to talk about on the discord. Absolutely. So, uh, thanks you 
Thanks you. Ooh, that's what Tamina said. Thank, Thank you so you. much um, to uh, everybody who calls the hotline. Once again, 747-666-5606 or email hotline at pwpalskis.com. That'll do it for this week's program. You know all the things. Please follow us on social media at pwpalskis and head on over to pwpalskis.com. Click that Patreon button and check out the Patreon. It's the best way to support the show. We want every single one of you listening to this to become a patron and join us live because the live streams are so much more fun when there's a ton of people in the chat and everybody's throwing out their ideas and, you know, like uh, affecting the show and, and, and contributing to the conversation. It allows us to cover so much of a wider basis of opinions and thoughts that Scott and I immediately might not have. Uh, it turns you into a co-host. Yeah, you and could have been jumping in on that conversation where we're speculating who's going to join in on the Rumble, or who are the men, and then you could have been popping in right away, altered the conversation, taken another direction, had some wonderful theories that we could have been mentioning, all that stuff. Like, it's you can be directly in the show. And and honestly, it's just a measly five bucks a month. That's less than all your other streaming services. It's uh, like a not even the price of a burrito a week. For Scott and I, uh, we have to share it. It's very problematic. But, but that's it's like Lady five. and the Tramp. <laughs> Ooh. But we start in the middle and work our way out. It's very bizarre. Uh, five bucks a month to get you access to the bi-weekly pre-shows and access to our live stream where you can join in that conversation in real time. Uh, Ten bucks get you access to everything, including the weekly watch along Wednesdays, countless other exclusive bonus episodes, series, and videos, including the Hair Hall of Fame, the Rumor Mill, and more. And of course, becoming a championship Palski, you get everything all of the other people get, and you get entered every month into the championship Palski battle royal. The current PWP champ is Andrea Beeler, a.k.a. Pollen Hate, uh, ruling with an iron fist. The first episode of every month, we will have a new drawing to draw a random winner of our championship Palski to see who the PWP champion is for that month. And of course, that person gets to pick a watch along. They get special recognition, not just in the live feed, but the Discord. And you get some free merch. You get a free shirt or mask of your choosing every time you win a championship. So uh, we really hope you'll consider becoming uh, becoming a patron. Again, we appreciate those of you who listen in the pod feed every single week. We appreciate your continued support of the show and for tuning in. We see the numbers. We know how many people are tuning in. We really appreciate it. It's so much more than uh, I think any one of us really realize tuning in each and every week to uh, hear us bullshit and yap about wrestling. Uh, if you're one of those and you've never been vocal, you're never not in the Discord, you're not one of the people who likes kind of, uh, you know, making your presence known, that's cool too. We appreciate you. You can help us out by leaving a rating and review on Apple Podcasts. It's a new year. We'd love to get some new ratings and reviews if you've been listening to the show since long before it was Scott and I doing Pro Wrestling Palskis and you left a review then, you can update that review. And uh, it'll bring it right to the top and you can talk about the show that currently exists, which would be greatly appreciated as well. And of course, at pwpalskies.com, you can also find some merchandise, all those aforementioned uh, shirts and masks, as well as mugs, which you can buy and wear and you're on your face and on your body and on your butt if you'd like to and drink stuff out of. And all of that uh, goes to uh, support the show, which is something we need support. Yeah. Because we're emotionally distraught. So we tear others down with big ripped bodies that do theater Yeah, uh, you're, to make ourselves feel better about ourselves. You're not wrong. And of course, the other big, big bonus to becoming a Patreon Palski, it's the only way known to mankind currently in existence to get a retribution name. On top of that, dude love and Cactus Jack. That's the only way is you become a Powski, you get a retribution name. So thank you to all of our current Patreon Powskis, AJ0314, a.k.a. Binary, Alex Pierce, a.k.a. Figs, Alice Raider, a.k.a. Invasion, Andrew Beeler, a.k.a. Pollen Hate, a.k.a. the PWP Champ, Brad from Tennessee, a.k.a. Dry Rub, Brian Holloway, a.k.a. Thunder Void, Gilbert Short, a.k.a. Goliathon, Mass Llama, a.k.a. Spitz, Michael Beltran, a.k.a. Limestone, Miguel Diaz, a.k.a bipod one and only nuggets aka double dip pete garit aka rhymes tim bemis aka war trek tim redbeard aka blood fuzz tina keys aka lockup tom hater aka cupid tony griggs aka big griggs and zachary fuso aka fuse box 
Uh, and there you have it. That'll do it for this week's program. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Find me on social media at Jake Lloyd Bacon. Find Scott at Scott Narver. We will see you next week. Um, next week, if you listen to the pod feed, is a live show. Uh, so if you're not a Patreon, next week is your next day to hop on into a live one. And uh, that'll do it. We hope you enjoyed speculating about the Rumble with us. As always, it's an absolute blast. Hanging out with you, the Pro Wrestling Powskis. Hey, everybody. Jake here from Dragon Wagon Radio. And I'm here with uh, Mark E. Extreme and Skeeter Skyflyer. Did you just have to read that? <laughs> okay, um, I mean, yeah. I, no. I, I, no. How, how could you possibly not know who I am? Because uh, my name is Mark e. Extreme, 15 plus years undefeated backyard wrestling entertainment champion and owner and the host of On Your Mark. So I'm offended that you don't know who I am, and I'm here with the shit on my shoulder. That's Skeeter Scaffler. I mean, a lot of people don't know me, but it makes sense that people don't know you too. Look at everybody. I'm a pretty big deal, okay? Well, I'm, I mean no disrespect, uh, Mr. Extreme, I assure you, but uh, you mentioned you have a podcast on the network called On Your Mark. What exactly is On Your Mark? On Your Mark is the best wrestling podcast on the airwaves. Every Wednesday, we are deep diving into wrestling topics like giving you a perspective like you've never heard before because there's nobody that can give you a perspective like I can. Well, a lot of people could give the perspective that you give on wrestling, but they're busy being wrestlers and being really successful in the ring and working and being in front of millions of people every <laughs> week on television and in a crowd. There's nothing different. All right. I think I get what's happening. It's comedy. You guys are just doing a bit. Mark, you're like every 90s wrestling kid stuck in the past. And Skeeter, you're like the idiot little brother type who just loves everything, no matter how cheesy it is. I get it. You're, you're playing characters. You guys are like a pro wrestling version of Jimmy Glick or Tony Clifton. Uh, well, I don't know who the hell those guys are. And, you know, frankly, the, I'm kind of offended because I take this business very seriously and there's nothing funny about what we do. Right, Skeeter? That's right. So tune in every Wednesday. A new episode drops weekly covering new topics on on your mark show.com also wherever you're listening to your podcast right now it's dragon wagon